Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we are going to start with the session number two. Uh, we are in the middle of the uh, week number two. Um, we are going to have session three tomorrow and then we are going to have session four and we are going to end the second week and we are going to be in the middle of the course. So we're just going to have two more weeks after this one. So time is going really, really fast. So um, yesterday, we're going to continue with the topics that we were developing yesterday. Um, we were talking about the common medicines because we have that information um, for the session that we were developing yesterday. Also, we were talking about positive and negative um, imperatives. We were explaining what are the imperatives and what are the exclamatory sentences. And now we are going to begin the session with a conversation that is called Don't Work Too Hard. So we are going to listen that conversation because in that case, you are going to listen a, some imperative words or you are going to find some imperative words in the conversation. So we're going to begin with that part and then we're going to do the reading exercise and the knowledge check. Vamos a escuchar una conversación sobre eh, los imperativos en la plataforma. Eh, también vamos a hacer el knowledge check de la sección 2 y vamos a entrar a la sección 3. So we are going to begin with that because I need to add, uh, work on, um, I mean, I need to work on se section 3 because you need to complete that section uh, this week. So. We're going to begin with the conversation. Vamos a escuchar la conversación, don't work too hard. Y vamos a, a, a ir identificando algunas oraciones, ¿verdad? Algunas órdenes que se le da en esa conversación. So, let's go to the platform and let's hear the conversation. So, pay attention to the conversation. And then we're going to make a knowledge check. So, let's hear. It is taking its time because I think I have watched the video before and it is not at the beginning. I think I need to make it for the beginning of the, of the video. So. Necesito cargarlo de nuevo porque estaba a la mitad. Y no va a funcionar. So, give else? me a second. Yes. Hello, Ms. West. How are you today? Not so good. So what's wrong exactly? I'm exhausted. Hmm. Why are you so tired? I don't know. I just can't sleep at night. Okay, let's take a look at you. I'm going to give you some pills. Take one pill every night after dinner. Okay. 
And don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. Anything else? Yes. Don't work too hard. All right. Thanks, Dr. Young. The conversation that we just heard. Dr. Young. Okay, in that case, we have the conversation between the doctor and a patient. And we have Dr. John and Mrs. West. So in that case, we were uh, seeing some uh, imperative uh, sentences in which the doctor is telling the uh, patient to do or don't do something. In that case, in the first part of the conversation, we cannot see um, that kind of sentence because they are not like very, very marked in that place. But in the second part, it says, I'm going to give you some pills. Take one pill every night. In that case, we have an order there because it says take one pill every night. So in that case, it's ordering doing something. Then we have a negative imperative that is don't drink coffee, tea, or soda. And the last one, don't work too hard. So in that case, we have three different imperatives there. One is positive and two are negative. So you can see that uh, those examples are there. So we were talking about imperatives, but now we are going to end with that part because uh, we have the explanation on the document. So now we are going to go to the knowledge check because in that case, we're going to talk about the knowledge check that is talking about improve your health. I know that maybe all of you have completed that part, but we are going to do it right now to end section two. So in this case, we're going to read the article that we have there. This is the knowledge check of the section number two. We have here just uh, 10 simple ways to improve your health. So in this case, we're going to make it like this one because we're going one by one. So it says 10 simple ways to improve your health. Believe it or not, you can greatly improve your health in 10 simple ways. So we're going to see number one, but this one is not working because it's kind of uh, yes, here. Number one, eat breakfast. Breakfast gives you energy from the morning. Number two, go for a walk. Walking is good exercise and exercise is necessary for good health. Number three, floss your teeth. Don't just brush them. Flushing keeps you your gums healthy. Number four, drink a cup of water every day. Water helps your body in many ways. Number five, a stretch for five minutes. A stretching is important for your muscles. Number six, wear a seat belt every year. Seat belts save thousands of lives. Number seven, do something to challenge your brain. For example, do crossword puzzles or read a new book. Number eight, protect your skin. Use lots of moisturizers and sunscreen. Number nine, get enough calcium. Your bones need it. Dairy foods like yogurt, milk, and cheese have calcium. And number 10, take a time out, a break of about 20 minutes. Do something different, for example, get up and walk or sit down and listen to music. So there we have 10 simple ways to improve your health. Así que en ese artículo tenemos 10 maneras diferentes en las que podemos mejorar nuestra salud. Y ahí explica, ¿verdad? Cada una de ellas. And we're going to see what uh, are the uh, things that we have here. Number one, to get exercise is okay. at breakfast. 
protect your skin, go for a walk or a stretch for five minutes. Go for walk. Go for a walk. Just in that case, it says, um, go for a walk. Walking is good exercise. To get exercise, you need to go for a walk. To help your bones, what do you need to help your bones? Straight of five minutes. Mm. Get anything no. calcium, Crow. Get and no calcium. Uh, yes, get no calcium. Get, get, get enough calcium. calcium. Uh, yes. That is the one. To help your muscle. This one. To help your muscles. To help your for five minutes. A stretch for five, for five minutes. Uh -huh. A stretch for five minutes. Then we have the next one. To keep your gums healthy. Plus your, your teeth. Plus your teeth. Plus your teeth. teeth. Good. To have energy for the morning. Eat breakfast. Eat breakfast. Eat breakfast. breakfast. A breakfast, good. To challenge your brain. Do a crossword. Do a crossword or well, a new book. That's good. Do a crossword puzzle or read a new book. Let's go. Let's see if they are correct. We're going to see if you have all of these ones correct. So they are. They are correct. Good. So in this case, we end section two and we're going to begin with section number three. We're going to see what are the elements, what are the topics that we're going to develop in section number three. Vamos a comenzar con lo que es la sección número tres. And in this case, we're going to talk about vocabulary. Vamos a utilizar vocabulario. So let me go to the document because we're going to see some vocabulary related to places and things. In this case, it's not just to talk about like the police station, um, a restaurant and all of the things. We're going to see more uh, other uh, places and we are going to have some examples that we can uh, use for that those places. Vamos a hablar de lugares, pero vamos a eh, make an improvement. Vamos a mejorar esa información de los lugares y vamos a hacerlos. Eh, yeah. Por yeah. categorías, we are going to have categories of places and we are going to have the word and then we are going to have a phrase about that place. So in that case, we're going to make like examples. So the topic is places and things. So in this case, we have that the words that we're going to see in the document are the most important words used when talking about different places and areas such as shops, towns, and the countryside. Buildings, shops, and communities are categorized with an example sentence provide a, for a learning in context. Así que cada una de esas categorías que vamos a ver en este momento llevan una oración que nos permite a nosotros entender el contexto en cual vamos a utilizar esa palabra. So, we are going to see the first category because I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, five different categories of words. Cinco categorías de lugares. So, we are going to begin with category number one. And this is buildings people live in. Edificios en los que viven las personas. So let's see what are the words that we have for this um, for this category. 
We have in number one, apartment. Apartment. And we have the example. I live in an apartment on say, 52nd Street. I live in an apartment in, on 52nd Street. I live, I mean, I live in an apartment S street. So this one is a very basic word because you know that apartment um, in Spanish is apartamento. So that one is, is not complicated for us to understand what is the meaning. So we can say in the, in the example, I live in a, an apartment on. Estamos hablando de que vivimos en un apartamento en y decimos el lugar en el que vivimos. En este caso es la calle 52 or something like that. On significa sobre, ¿verdad? In that case is when you are like walking in that place. Es sobre, pero como en este caso estamos hablando de la calle, como no nos metemos dentro de ella, pues es on. Uh, bueno. Si estuviéramos hablando de algo en lo que podríamos entrar, in, algo en lo que estemos nosotros dentro, in, en, pero en este caso es on. Así que, but we are going to see the, the adverse, I guess, the adverse of place. Let me see, because I remember that we are going to see that. Yes. In this country. Mm, no today, but I guess tomorrow we are going to talk about preposition of places. And there we are going to see the differences between uh, the words and we are going to see some examples of preposition of places. So in that case, you are going to see in which cases you are going to use in, on, and all of that prepositions. Así que lo más seguro es que mañana veamos las preposiciones. ¿no? Vamos a ver las diferencias y en qué momento lo vamos a utilizar. So, then we have number two, apartment. Apartment block. So, in this example, we have Tom has a place in that apartment block over there. Es como un grupo de apartamentos. Number three, block of flats. But in this case, it's um, in British. So in that case, it's, we're going not to, to have like this example. Because in that case, it, in, we can say a block of flats because we're changing the, the way we're speaking. So give me a second, please. Okay, in that case, a block of flats is como un bloque de pisos. O sea, como, it's almost the same with the apartment. So in that case, we're not going to use it because it is in, in British English and we're going to get confused with the pronunciation and the expressions in British. So we are going to have bungalow. And it says the bungalow in the forest is so nice for a weekend getaway.
Then we have cottage. But we're not talking about cheese. He has a cute cottage by the sea. He has a cute cottage by the sea. I am jealous. In this case, it's like we can translate cottage into. Podemos decir que es como una cam, una una casita eh, rural, una casita de campo. Eh, que son esas casitas que utilizamos para, para descansar en las vacaciones, ¿verdad? Es una casa eh, que lo podemos utilizar tanto en el bosque como en el océano, la playa. So, in this case, is that kind of eh, cabañas, casas rurales o, o casas de campo que se utilizan solo para eh, las vacaciones. That is cottage. Then we have a duplex. This one uh, says a duplex always contains two separate homes or apartments. And in this case, you can trans you cannot translate uh, uh, the word duplex. You can say just with your accent. Uh, pero un duplex es como una casa doble in this case, um, because it says that contains two separate homes or apartments. So they are very kind of big, and we have two different spaces there. Then we have. Floor on the ground, first top floor. In this case, we're talking about the first floor, but they have different names. En ese caso, vamos a hablar de lo, del primer piso. Y el primer piso tiene diferentes nombres. So we have floor, floor on the ground. Es como el piso en la... We can say like, no tierra, but it is... Corredor. Um, no. no. Es como decir... Sótano. No es el sótano, sino que es la primera planta. O sea, la primera planta, no el sótano, sino la primera planta que tiene el edificio. Es como decir... Um... La sala. Sí, o sea, sí sería como el primerito, primerito en este caso, como estamos hablando de apartamentos, pero si, lo, si lo, le hacemos la traducción sería como... Eh, como el lobby. El, ajá, el piso, pero sería como bien redundante en el suelo, o sea, que está a ras de suelo, o sea, el primero que encontramos. Planta baja. Ajá, es la planta baja. That's good, la planta baja del de edificio. So, floor on, the, on ground, también lo tenemos como first... O sea, primer piso, first, first floor, y también tiene otro nombre. En este caso sería top floor. Son tres nombres diferentes. And we have the example. Jack lives on the first floor. This one is a very common word, house. 
Esta sí ya la conocemos hasta de memoria. Casa, ¿verdad? House. I would love to own a house someday. I love to own a house someday. Me gustaría, ¿verdad? Eh, tener una casa. En este caso es to own, es tener pertenencia sobre algo, o sea, ser el dueño de algo. Me gustaría eh, tener una casa algún día. Then we have another one. Multi-story building. We have the multi, multi, multi-story building. Uh, let me write the sentence in a moment. Give me a second. Okay, we have here this one and that is a story, but they is not talking about a, like um, something magical or something like that. This is a part of the, uh, the physical space of an apartment. A story 10, then we have Another one that is multi-story building. And we have the example, and I will explain what is this. So give me a second. He lives in a 50 story building. Esto del story, story building, o el multi-story building, se refiere a los pisos que tiene el edificio. So in that case, we are talking about lo, de los pisos. Estamos hablando de los pisos que tiene. So in that case, in the example, he lives in a 50-story building. Él, él vive en un edificio de 50, in that case, eh, pisos. So story Eh, no se trata de historia, sino de los pisos que tiene un edificio. And that word it's very, very common. You're going to find it in different uh, books. When you are reading in English, you're going to find a lot of um, books in which you are going to uh, read that word, a story. In the story 10, in the story 2, or something like that, and it is very common when you are reading some stories. Then we have the second category. There are other buildings. Tenemos otras edificaciones, otros edificios. So let me here. We have bar. That you know in Spanish is the same bar. Let's go to the bar and get a drink.
Este es un bar, ¿verdad? Vamos al bar a obtener o tomar una bebida. Then we have car park. I will leave my car in the car park and meet you at the office. Es como decir en el parqueo. We have a castle. I mean, castle. This one, it says the queen lives in a castle. It's un castillo. Then we have a cathedral. And this one said, the cathedral is always the most magnificent Catholic church in town. Es la catedral. Then we have church, it's la iglesia, and it says there is a small church up on the hill. I mean, what is one church? George on the hill. Next one, we have office. And this one said, he works in that office over there. He works in that office over there. Oficina, office. Post office. Let's shop by the post office to send off these letters. Let's stop, I mean, let's stop. Let's stop by the post office to send off these letters. In this case, el oficina postal. We have restaurant. El restaurante. I like to go to an Italian restaurant tonight. I like to go to an Italian restaurant. Tonight, I mean restaurant. Then we have another one. There is the is a skyscraper. A skyscraper. Es un rascacielos. That sky scrapper is, and we have a number 110 stories tall.
Then we have the station, la estación. Can you pick me up at the station? Can you pick me up at the station? Bus station. La estación del bus. I caught a greyhound the bus at the bus station. Fire station. La estación del fuego. Oh, no, it's not the, la estación del fuego. Este es el de los bomberos. What will we do without the fire station? La tienda de la esquina, ¿cómo se diría en inglés? Um, the corner shop, you can do it like that. The corners shop. Y si es una tiendita, the little shop. Corners, what the corners. meaning corners? El corner es la esquina. Ah. La tienda de la esquina. Uh -huh. Corners, con apóstrofe S, corners shop. Shop. Uh -huh. shop. The yes. corners shop. Then we have the police station. La estación de los policías. And it says the police station is located down this road. And the last one, we have the airport. El aeropuerto. I need to get to the airport by six o'clock. So we have two different categories right now, and we have four. So in this case, we have like buildings. First, buildings in which people is living. And the second one are the other buildings that we have. Así que tenemos dos categorías de edificios. Uno es donde las personas viven, o sea, donde ellos hacen su, su hogar. Y la segunda son otras edificaciones, otros edificios donde tenemos otro tipo de eh, Podemos decir negocios o, eh, por ejemplo, en, en, el de la policía, ¿verdad? Tenemos ahí a la policía, tenemos la, la, a la oficina postal, tenemos el restaurante, en all of that uh, things, tenemos algunos negocios. Así que ahí tenemos los buildings, las, eh, los edificios. Now, we are going to talk about stores and shops. Vamos a hablar de tiendas en este caso. That is the number three, the category number three. Let's see. It says, ah, don't worry. No se preocupe por eso. Acuérdese que yo siempre les estoy dejando la información ahí. Si no tienen acceso al documento, ustedes pueden eh, pedirlo o pedir acceso al documento para que ustedes vayan viendo la información. Pero estamos hablando de, de lugares. Ahorita estamos hablando de lugares. Esto es lo que hemos visto. Escuchamos una conversación, pero era parte del tema anterior. So, number three. Stores and shops. Okay. 
We have stores sería tiendas de venta de ropa. Sí podría ser de venta de ropa o de zapatos. Son, son tiendas, pero en este caso no son como grandes, sino que son tiendas un poco pequeñas. Y shops, en este caso, sería como igual tiendas, pero eso se le agrega más que todo a otras... Um, a otros, a otros nombres, por ejemplo, el coffee shop, que es la cafetería, también se le puede agregar a esa, pero sí se trata de tiendas, no muy grandes en este caso, aunque el store sí podría ser como tiendas medianas, eh, pero sí, son tiendas, ambas son tiendas, solo que unas son más grandes y otras más pequeñas. Gracias. So we're going to see what are, or, or in this case, uh, which uh, stores or shops we can um, find here. So. In este caso, vamos a ver como, no lo vamos a poner como, en, por ejemplo, en eso de bakers, we have bakers, no lo vamos a poner como bakery. Bakery es una panadería, pero en este caso eh, lo vamos a, a poner como con apóstrofe. Lo vamos a poner como bakers. Porque estamos hablando como. Um, lo vamos a poner como con. con um, I mean. Um, como que le pertenece. So in this case, we are going to, to put bakers, refiriéndose también a la persona que trabaja ahí. Bakers, butchers, um, dry cleaners, and all of that things. Nos saldría más fácil poner bakery, pero lo vamos a hacer de esta manera. So we are going to see. So we have in the first one, bakers. Bake, bakery, bakers. And we have the example. I like to go to the bakers to get a cake. Me gusta ir a la panadería o donde el panadero, porque en este caso bakers es como, eh, como donde el, el panadero, la tienda del panadero, solo que nosotros conocemos que es una panadería. I like to go to the bakers to get a cake. Then we have the butchers. Estos son los carniceros. Can you pick up a pound of hamburger from the butchers? Can you pick a pound of hamburger? from the butchers. En este caso lo estamos haciendo como la pertenencia, o sea, la persona que hace el, el oficio de, entonces sería como la tienda de el carnicero, la tienda del panadero. Sí se les pone otros nombres, pero en este caso sí lo vamos a hacer como la pertenencia de el de la persona. Then we have the department store. Some people like shopping in a department store because they can find everything in one place.
So in this case, we can translate this like tienda departamental, but in this case, you know that they are like a group of uh, shops um, or stores that are in one place. It's como una plaza. So in that case, you can find all of the stores in one place. Then we have dry cleaners. Dry cleaners. And it says, I will pick up my shirt and the dry cleaners after work. Estas son las famosas tintorerías. La palabra pick up, ¿qué le agrega? ¿Qué significa? Recoger. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up, pick up ah. es recoger. Can you yes. pick up that for me? Puedes recoger eso por mí. Así que esa es la traducción, recoger. Then we have this one, fishmongers, fishmongers, en este caso es como una pescadería, fishmongers. We bath, we bought three pounds of someone Tell me, Damaris. How do you say in English, um, llantería? Llantería. Okay, give me a second. I will answer your question. In that case, because you are talking about um, tires, because the word in, in, in English about uh, llantas, uh, la llanta is tires. So in that case, you need to remember that uh, you are going to use the word of the, of the article that you are like, the word that you are using is the base of the, of the name. So in this case, you can say like they are tire, tire shop, porque como eh, llanta es tires, y la tienda que vende las, las llantas, pues le podríamos llamar eh, tienda de llantas, ¿no? Mm. So in that case, you can call it like rims, tires and wheel rims, porque le pone como tires and wheel, y le pone rims. Así que así se le podría llamar a las a las esas tiendas. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Rims, just rims. Rims. Okay, then we have the green grocers. Green Grocer es donde nosotros podemos comprar las verduras. Green Grocer. Le podríamos llamar verdulería o something like that. Green Grocers. And we have the example, the Green Grocers. The Green Grocers have some lovely celery have some long, lovely celery. Now, the grocers eh, son estas tiendas eh, donde podemos encontrar productos básicos, ¿verdad? 
Es como una, una tienda de productos básicos. Grocers. She stopped. She stopped. By the grocers. To pick up some food. To pick up. Some food. Then we have the hardware store. So in this case, you know that when we're talking about hardware, we are talking about in some cases, um, computadoras o eh, aparatos electrónicos. So en este caso sabemos que son aparatos electrónicos en general. Y son cosas, ¿verdad? Eh, físicas que podemos nosotros tocar porque es la parte, eh, como lo dice, ¿verdad? Dura de un eh, producto electrónico. So in this case we have this example. Do you think the hardware store sells lawn mowers? Do you think hardware store sells lawn mowers? The lawn mowers eh, son cortadoras de césped o corta césped. Then we have number four, and this is the last one. And this is communities, comunidades. Communities, we have city, easy, ciudad. He lives in a big city. Then we have another one, capital city. This is la capital, right? No? Shannon lives in the capital city of Oregon. Or un puerto, or Lakehorn is a port on the Tyrrhenian Sea. Resort Es un complejo turístico, un resort. And it says, my friend, my friend is staying on a resort on the beach. Then we have town. Es una ciudad, town. Es, no es una ciudad como city, es como small cities, es, una, es como un pueblo, un town, es más pequeño que city. City es mucho más grande. So en este caso es como un pueblo. I live in a small town near the border.
And then we have a village. Es una villa. Mucho más pequeña todavía. Village. There are many charming villages in France. There are many charming villages in France. So the point of this uh, information that we have here is to know the uh, common names of um, structures or places that we have in a city or even in a country itself. But also uh, the purpose of uh, having the examples is to know how to apply that a uh, vocabulary into a uh, daily uh, speech. Yeah. As can... Tell me. No, okay. El punto de tener esos vocabularios y no simplemente tener las palabras, sino que eh, crear oraciones con ellas es que sepamos cómo aplicarlas. Because one thing is, uh, we know a lot of vocabulary, we know a, a, a lot of names in English, but if we don't practice uh, creating sentences with those uh, words, we are not going to um, do nothing with that information. So in this case, we have the word and we have the example, and you can use those examples to apply the information that you have about these kind of topics. And we have like another one and that is a, a small um, vocabulary about parts and areas of communities. But in this case, I'm just going to mention them because we have just two minutes to end the session. We have area, that is area. Country area is el, el area de un país. Residential area, que es el, el área residencial. Rural area, que es el área rural. Urban area, que es el área urbana. Center, que es como el centro de la ciudad. City center, en este caso, si es el centro, exactamente el punto central de la ciudad. District, es un distrito. Distrito. Exactamente. Region, es una región. Y suburb es un suburbio. So we have more words in that case to explain or to talk about cities, places, and all of that things. But in this case, we're not going to have this one in this precise moment, but I am going to add the parts and areas of a community. Siempre le voy a agregar esa información al final del documento para que ustedes tengan esa, esa última parte de las de las áreas de las comunidades para que siempre tengan sus, eh, sus ejemplos. En este caso, if you have problems with some of these words that we have here in the vocabulary, you have this document and you can um, copy the words that you have here and you can translate it into Spanish to remember all the words that we are using here. Así que pueden hacer sus propios vocabularios con estas palabras. Eh, yo mandé el enlace al grupo de WhatsApp. No sé si usted está en el grupo de WhatsApp. Si no, déjenme ver si le puedo mandar el enlace ahorita aquí al chat. So, lo voy a detener un momento para poder hacerlo. Because in that case, it's kind of complicated. Así que ya se le voy a mandar el enlace porque aquí aparece directamente. So, here. Give me a moment and I have here the link so you can access to the document. That is the link. Um, enlace para las clases, el de Zoom. Tell me, Frank. Ah, el, el, el canal de YouTube. Se lo voy a colocar abajo del documento. Ahora ya tiene usted acceso al documento. Se lo voy a dejar en el documento el link del de 
de la playlist para que ustedes vayan directamente a la playlist. Tell me, Frank. Your microphone is off. Sorry, gracias. gracias. A, la plata, a la plataforma yo no he podido ingresar aún porque yo no sé realmente si el correo a mí se me ha, no sé si se me ha ido del todo cuál es correctamente, pero he querido ingresar y no he podido. No sé de qué forma me, puede, me podría ayudar usted ahí. ¿Usted está en el, en el grupo? Ah, sí, estoy en el grupo de WhatsApp. Ajá. Entonces, en el sí, grupo de WhatsApp, usted escribe un mensaje diciendo que tiene problema y yo lo voy a reenviar para que se contacte con usted. Me pone su nombre y me dice que no puede accesar al, a la plataforma porque Ajá. no tiene las, el, el, la, para el ingreso. Y yo lo voy a reenviar y ellos se van a contactar con usted. Eh, mm, mm, de descargar el documento. Sí, porque... Ajá. Es que yo, perdón, yo lo descargué, ingresé todo y todo bien, pero uh -huh. como me están diciendo de que ahí hay que también como que hacer otras tareas. No sí, sé. sí, porque en la plataforma usted entra y eh, tiene las secciones. Hay cinco secciones ahí que usted va a ir resolviendo. Uh -huh. Entonces, para esta semana, usted ya tiene que haber resuelto hasta la tercera. Entonces, si no tiene acceso, yo le voy a decir que usted no ha podido ingresar por ese problema y que ellos le ayuden a ingresar y usted ya puede trabajar en la plataforma. So, ahí Ajá, sí. okay. eh, uh -huh. solo eh, estaba teniendo un poquito de problemas con la conexión, pero no sé si es por la, la señal acá donde yo estoy o es, o es normal. Um, no, creo que sí es, está teniendo un par de problemas porque por momentos se queda. Uh -huh. se pero queda, no, correcto. Usted, usted escribe en el chat eh, su nombre y el problema que tiene, yo lo reenvío y ellos se contactan directamente con usted. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok, está, entonces yo envío mi nombre y el inconveniente que tengo. Mm -hmm. lo, y ya lo voy a reenviar yo inmediatamente cuando usted lo escriba. Ok, gracias. You're gracias, welcome. Richard. Thanks. You're Thanks. welcome. El documento no, no se puede descargar, sino que ustedes lo, lo abren con Drive, con su cuenta de Google y ya les aparece directamente ahí. No necesitan descargarlo y se va actualizando. Ese documento queda ahí, así que no se preocupen por eso. So. Now it's uh, time to end the session. Vamos a terminar la, la sesión aquí. We're going to see each other tomorrow in session number three. So have a really good night. 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 Good night.